I am the son of Bartanian, who is a humanitarian Armenian leader who is currently being held hostage in Baku. Ruben, my father, had a very long and uh, successful career in business and for the last 15 years in humanitarian work, especially in Armenia and Artsakh. And uh, in t August 2022, he decided to uh, move uh, to Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, considering the really difficult situation that the 120,000 people, Armenians, found themselves in. And uh, for one year, he lived with them. Uh, he served briefly as the Minister of State for three months, but primarily his work was focused on humanitarian issues and educational programs. I will never forget our conversation when he said that we all have three choices when faced with difficulty. Either we try to isolate ourselves and run away, Two, we try to adapt and just accept the circumstances. Or three, despite all the difficulties, we try to stand up and change uh, even the most impossible of situations and act in accordance of our values. So he always chose the third option. For one year, he lived uh, he lived with, with the people of Nagorno-Karabakh. He served as the state minister for three months. And, uh, you know, for the last... Eight months of his stay there, he was just a lo local civilian who did a lot of humanitarian philanthropic projects despite all the uh, difficult situations. There was no petrol, there was no electricity for a long time, so they managed to bring in a uh, electric car that was powered by uh, electricity and solar panels. And so he was able to uh, uh, help a lot of uh, pregnant women and for new Armenians to be born. It's been a difficult time, but also uh, at, the, at the same time, as you correctly say, I feel immensely proud uh, of my father for having the courage to do what he believes was right and for trying to stand up for a minority group who were exiled from their ethnic homeland uh, and abandoned by a lot of people. Um, so, in September, probably the most likely outcome happened where Azerbaijan launched a military offensive against people who have been starving for 10 months. Obviously, that ended very quickly, despite the heroic efforts of uh, the young boys who were defending um, Nagorno-Karabakh. And unfortunately, on September 27th, uh, when everyone was leaving uh, through the only entry point uh, via the Lashing Corridor, my father, together with the rest of the civilians, uh, was leaving there as well. And then uh, he was detained uh, by the Azerbaijani border police. My father was the first to be arrested, but then this soon followed by seven others, uh, including three ex-presidents. But we must also not forget that Azerbaijan has been holding boys who were arrested during the 2020 war and also boys who were f prisoners of war after the recent military aggression. So the numbers right now are still unclear, which is even more concerning. And we're obviously, I'm worried for my father, but I'm also worried for all the Armenians who are being held in Baku. I think it was a very clear message uh, that was sent to all Armenian people uh, with the arrest of someone like my father, Ruben, that no Armenian is safe and that uh, this, this can happen to all of you. For me, obviously, I hope that he comes back to us uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I hope that he is freed as soon as possible uh, because there is no basis for his arrest. Uh, but I also understand that uh, what's happening to him and the journey that he's going through uh, has not been in vain. And I hope that, um, you know, his arrest will only spur more international support for Armenia and the uh, refugees from Artsakh. We need to speak more about the political prisoners, and I think the next step that we must do now is to put more pressure on Azerbaijan. It's the call to action that we must do, that we all know what's happening is completely against all international norms and standards. And we need to show Azerbaijan that such behavior cannot be tolerated, especially if the country wants to position itself on the international stage.